and let us begin. Welcome back everyone to Hearts of Iron 4, of course, Quest Street War, in which we're playing as the Realm of Kyria. I'm your host, Mr. Kyria Lover, but the tide will rise by decree. Strangely, after the Realm and Harmony Party's presentation to the Secretariat, not even the furthest right-wing parties have much as seen opposition to the proposed Urban Reform and Assistance Act. What could they have said, when slide after slide, exhibit after exhibit, showed the abject poverty of the working class in the cities? The private charity workers who had documented these miseries testified for hours that even their best efforts were only blunting the impact of the Rome's increasing poverty. Only the staunch of the Parsons could look at the images of hungry Kieran crowded around soup kitchens and remain heartless, and even they recognized that starving, discontent urban masses are the allies of their Marxist rivals in the end. The squabbling was over for the precise details, not the spirit of the new law. And fragrance. The traders and executives balked at their new tax bills and there was much bluster about canceling government contracts and never amounted to anything. In cities across the country, the government had to scramble to acquire warehouses and office buildings to administer and deliver the new promises of aid to the urban poor. And the countryside, the farmers were more than happy to oblige a desperate government cure and willing to pay top tail to buy up grain. In the slums, however, as the new government measures kicked in, there was mostly just peace. Cheap bread and rice sold at a steep loss, flooded the cities and filled hungry bellies. New schools kept children off the unsafe streets within a few weeks. Thousands of Kieran were finding stable jobs, hunting, uh, building new homes, replaced Kiria's sprawling shanty towns. It'll take years to fully plot all the slums out of poverty, but at least now the government cannot be accused of dragging its hooves. A strained treasury is still better than a guilty conscience. So. But overall, I hope you're having a great day. We have a cup of ginseng tea here. I think it's guava ginseng tea. Very nice. Oh, oh. At the time of recording, there has been an update, so was, things might be slightly off, uh, as you can see right here with the text. So, still building up the railways. The Vermilion and Kyrian army. Um, yeah, it's been all right here. Uh, Tea's chewing the sky. Fall. Other than that, we're doing quite a, quite well. As we're doing representation for the rising fire, uh, which would be very nice. Increases the number of provincial diets controllable by the path of the rising fire by plus one. So basically, I'm avoiding everything. We're just trying to avoid keeping it to the bounds for now because that'll destroy. A lot of political power and stability for a while. But it is what it is, you know. Um, I think you did read this one last time. So if you read about the for land and labor, let's fight together. Please go right ahead. Mechanical rotor systems. Or can we come down here? Ah, let's get more research speed. 188 days are not bad, but still. And I do re recognize that we still have more stuff to do here, too. Alright, corn suck. What are we going to put you as? So, overall, you have no resources. Command power, political power would not be bad. We don't want to maximize harmony, so let's go with uh, we'll go this one. Why not for now? Cool. And the flame of faith, Cerulean so and Lowlands become stronger to the congregation of the common hearth. A Roman harmony party conquered cost of minus sixty-six percent. Interesting. Verdant or uh, Verdant. Verdant or Verdant, as a bastion of Kyrian faith, and its position at the delta of the Mellow Fluv allows all the Kyrian realm's religious tendencies to meet here. As such, Verdant has become the heartland of a new political movement meant to unify fervent followers of the Concord, regardless of their sect. Institutional left, huh? The League for Labor and Liberty's efforts to unify the left are bearing fruit in Sorghum, the beating heart of central Kyria, they're quickly establishing a strong presence and securing the city's influential diet. Interesting. Collective laissez-faire. The industrialization of Kyria has created a new industrial, uh, industrial working class, and not be denied. Let the government project their right, or protect their right to organize, but otherwise allow the union's free reign to strike and stand up for the Kyrian worker. Cool. Uh, let's see, we'll go with this one next. A cherished friend of mine is a guardian of the soul who roots out corruption and decay, for friendship supplies the heart with the truth and their mind craves lies. And this is all from Mayflower Bloom. I had to say that I was not expecting my departure from the Collegium to result in the start of my political career, and yet I am falling asleep with the aching hooves as I write this. The rally in Verdant today was standing room only, but I would not have missed it for the world. River Lily and I don't sit on the sad lines like we had before in Mascot and Chrysanthemum. No, we were front and center cheering as the Kyrian left declared a grand alliance of the three parties, the Peasants' Union, the Marxist Workers' Party, and the Movement for Modern Kyria. All of them played our pleasure salute and support each other in the provincial elections and the morning secretariat. There's plenty of messiness to work out by these Kirin, for all their differences. Are of one mind on the core, more rights, more democracy, more attention to the plight of the common Kirin. They have the passion of the red angry fire without the self-destructive urge. Whatever happens, these Kirin are confident. I feel confident standing with them. River, River Lily does too. River Lily. A Miriam commission must have been sent to me by Concord, because what could I do to deserve her? Her kindness has pulled me from the hate I felt for my fellow Kieran and for myself, and given me a way back in the rally today. After we talked about what we had heard, and we agreed that we should join the movement for the modern Kieran and start supporting them in the next elections. Lily told me she was proud of me, and the tears in her eyes told me it was so much 
was for so much more than joining some campaign. I would not trade that little smile on her face for all the silks and the mascot. I told Lily that I was sorry for being such a bitter, miserable kid all this time, and I thanked her for pulling me out of that. But she shook her head and told me a sweet story about a bright-eyed young scientist, freshly arrived at the Collegium, who wrote a poetry and loved the sunsets in Vermilion, and such a zeal for helping her country out of this crisis she was sure it was facing. That Karen, she said, was a good Karen, and she was now only even better. I can't believe her yet. I might have set aside eugenics. Uh, I might have abandoned the idea that my fellow Kieran needs to be fixed, but I have to make amends forever believing it. Then maybe I can be the Kieran she was describing. Lily may not be think I need forgiveness, but I know that to forgive myself, I have to turn to politics. Cool. Very cool. Ah, as we have some tea together. What do we got here? Or sure, why not? Hey, you're looking pretty decent here. Nice. I do attack. Research speed. Maximize it. Mm hmm. New dockyards? Sure. Radiance. Well, I got quite a bit of population. So. Which is efficiency gain? I'm gonna go with them. <clears throat> hey, look at this. Not bad. Do we have any planes? Uh, we should probably focus on planes too. You can build more guns for now. We're out of steel, unfortunately, but it is what it is. Station left. Sure. The tank. Uh, we'll go this one, I guess, next. This one's pretty good too. Civilian infrastructure conversion. In all honesty, oh, this is not bad. Kowloon National. Research efficiency gain. Lack of resources penalty. Excavation technology research speed. And resource efficiency gain. So 20% in total? That's pretty strong. Benevolent associations. The nascent Kyrian state it still faces many uh, teething problems, funding and support non-governmental benevolent associations. Run by Will and Kieran on their own initiative to provide much needed services and opportunities where the state is too equipped, overstretched, or inflexible to deliver. To nurture the development of a new Kieran civil society, those both compliments or compliments the state and holds it accountable. Replace mild poverty with negligible poverty, which would be good. Replace limited illiteracy with negligible illiteracy, which would be fantastic. Then we got to talk about this. A Kieran cannot, buy, a bu cannot but by their own will be lost in darkness, for your heart ablazes as a beacon if only you see it. The Nyaric state is not anything special about Kira. I mean, it obviously is, but it represents something common to all creatures. Even a mouse, if trapped, will bite their hoof of its captor. When the creature uh, gives to despair, there's only two things that can break it. Anger and hope. That's as true as zebras, deer, and griffins as it is of Kieran. When Kieran given to anger, we become Nyaric, but the same violent passion it flares. Uh, in any creature's heart. If we want to avoid that, we have to provide them hope. I started to understand that today. River Lily and I spent today making our first real contribution to the movement for Monocurium. We canvassed the canals of Verdant, passing off flowers and explaining the party position on everything from civil rights reform to the rumored proposals for a new cannery complex. It's surprising and exciting how well informed the common Kieran is these days, and Lily and I found ourselves in a few passionate discussions. I'm proud to say I kept my cool as we traveled around with a group of MMK activists and tried to get gin up support. The elections for the provincial diet are closer than they feel, and the left-wing parties I find myself so suddenly attached to or need to win, big in the western and southern prefectures, to have influence on the morning secretariat. It's exciting having such an important goal, being surrounded by the like-minded, and brilliant Kieran all working for that goal. After stopping all day, one of the act activists I was with pulled me aside and suggested I should run for office somewhere. I was flabbergasted, but she insisted, apparently. My passion really was on display at the canals of Verdant that day, and that got me thinking. If Kieran nearly burned before the silence... It was because a weak Kieran failed to build a society that did not leave tens of thousands of Kieran destitute and desperate. And for centuries we've burned, buried our heads in the sand to avoid confronting the failure again. But now we have a chance of pro prosperity for all, with the benefit of hindsight to guide us in the fruits of modernity to carry us forward. We won't ever breed away the instinct to lash out when there's no other option, whatever it was I thinking with that, but we can do our best to make sure the Kieran blooms for every Kieran. My journey across Kiri is over. One could never see everything, but I've seen what I needed to do, too. I can thank R Lily for that, I do love that mayor. We set off from Vermilion apart from the capital, but there's only one... There's only one Greek city of Kira that Lily and I didn't visit because I already knew it. That's the closest thing I had to a hometown in this country. Uh, tomorrow I'll unpack in my bags, catching a train up right home, and I'm going to put my hoof in the ring and radiance. Nice. Teach him temperance. Courageous Kirin. Huh. 
Well, we got another one now, too. A blessings of humility. The way it fires, perhaps. The most famed for its ri uh, uh, ritual and splendor, temples wreathed in incense and mystics clothed in silk, but recently new orders have been spotted in vermilion, and temples and cities around the country are taking to their model. They skew the rich embroidered silks of their rifle stations in the hierarchy and send down simple initi initiates robes of burlap and jute, and travel into the curious, increasingly vast slums to provide alms for the urban poor. They bring carts loaded with the rice, bread, and fish to give away. They assist however they can in clinics and hospitals, and they care for and teach their children, overworking parents who would otherwise be soon caught up in the grim underbelly of the slums. The real poor had their fields, and if nothing else, the nation's forced to feed and clothe themselves from. The growing class of urban poor crowded into unsanitary and unsafe slums had nothing but what the day's wages can buy under the silence. All care were poor, but usually well fed and content. Now the nouveau riches. Parties spill out of the streets in the richest districts while foes go hungry to the slums and the government has proven so far unable to do much but promise things will improve. Already there is discontent in the living conditions of the working poor, and the specter of riots like those that force the establishment of the silence weighs heavily on the country, the way of fire harbor, and its pious believers are ever bound to the will of the Concord. And Concord does not want her children, uh, does not will her children to suffer. And so the new benevolent associations continue to grow, pulling donations above and beyond the usual teeth to fund the actions of a small army of pious volunteers for now. The compassion is the realm's best defense against the revolution. And if not for the charity of the cured people, our gallop would have stumbled. Um, I want to wait to do this one. <sighs> Give it to the balance. By getting to the radical party, a certain degree of influence of provincial diets, attempt pursuit, then our political situation stables, stabilizes as long as we keep our promises. Yeah, it's going to take a while. Dismiss the character. Fickle current has outlived his usefulness, his inability to compromise with the harmonious mainstream and curious rendering his leadership of the NAKP distinctly unprofitable. And elements within the party are organizing to protect their interests. We'll read about that one soon. I think I read this one last time. Did I? If you read this one, please go ahead, but... You cannot trust your spirit, I meant attend to that first, for the heart is ever the master of the mind and body. I spent the night at a school teacher's house in a village called Clearwater. I thought like she was a rural carrier, and now also I thought of Gavin. Clearwater can't have more than 200 Kieran living here, and most of them are spread out in farms miles from the village center. This might be the smallest place that I've ever been. But even in such a tiny place, Kieran's reopening has been felt, and the school teacher is not a Kieran, but an equestrian Pegasus named Silver Lining. She politely answered my many questions about Equestria, what its great cities are like, and what a truly modern society is like, what, like, Princess Celestia's governance is like. But she seemed mostly to want to talk about Kyria. She told me that she'd come here from the other end of the world when she heard about the return of Applejack and Fluttershy's mission, and she found a real calling to travel somewhere to help out spread the nature of harmony. <clears throat> and nurture harmony too. Then I asked how she ended up in clear water and she explained how she heard about a protest by the local peasants against their landlord as she came to help out and try to keep things civil. Immediately, I started imagining a rage Kieran threatening to go Nyrick or Nyrick in front of some of the aristocrats' mansion. But apparently when Silver had arrived, she found a peaceful picket. The mostly violent thing in clear water was being a rent strike. That, Silver said, is why she stayed. It was a village that rallied together to make things better for themselves but did its own harmony, not as violent revolutionaries but as determined and peaceful protesters. Silver so went on at some length about how much she admired the Kieran people, particularly praising the kind of resilience, determination, and grit that she hadn't seen anywhere else, and I suppose she had a point. Even in a village as small as Clearwater, the last few years since the end of the silence must have felt like a typhoon, but even as I could tell the Clearwater, for all its poverty, it was a happy place full of passion and hard work in Kieran. Who was that mayor that, at the Collegium, who so proudly proposed that these Kieran be carefully studied, screened, and controlled? Who was that mayor who was disappointed when the Collegium called out her barbarity for what it was? Who was that mayor who I was so afraid of simple, honest peasants just like these? As if at any moment they would torture the world around her? I wish he was not the mayor I had to see in the mirror and all I could think about as I lie here awake, unable to look Lily in the eye, the mayor who suffered of losing a curia she had never seen, so lost in the nightmares of her history books that she never saw the richness, the kindness, the passion, and compassion of my country mayors. What did a caring mayor like River Lily see in a heartless, dismissive, miscaranthropic academic like me? That's a good question. You never know. I guess more arty too. Oh, hello. Choosing to rule the party. Uh, no, we're good. Oh, what the? It's fine, whatever. So, they don't have a lot here. There you go. And there you go, too. Very nice. And then we'll do this Mr. Chair, Kieran. Uh, sure, why not? Oh, hey, we got better guns, though. Very cool. Need more uh, stuff here now too. I guess we never got out of this too. Thousand banner system. Good population is quite high.
Hmm. Yeah, it's fine for now, whatever. Get some planes. Rhapsody, they're very, very industrialized with 38 steel. Mm. Well, resource efficiency, and we'll do that one. Jubilee. 4.7 political power every day? That's not enough. <laughs> Times change. <coughs> um, I think I read this one too before, so if you want to read this one, please go ahead. Close air support aviation. Uh, Fickle Colonel was not having a very good day. The NAKP executive committee had been listening to him rant and rave for nearly half an hour at how ludicrous the proposal sitting in front of him was. It's simple enough. <clears throat> Autumn Blaze wanted the NAKP to pledge his sheer power to a new consul secretariat. Fickle was having none of it, and the committee was tense. Most of them seemed visibly uncomfortable, but if he noticed their nervous glances and sideways looks, he didn't care. Only two care in the room seemed unfazed, and his two staunch allies in the party, Sapper Snow and Arden Bloom. Oh, well, look at that. Uh, <clears throat> I don't give a quarter tail about the three and a half year plan, Fickle blurred in response to some me comment about the program's success. The rain shine let this country wall for decades. We have this one moment to take the reins from Vermilion and build a carry worth living. In, and they wanted to sit us down, smile, and do as we're told. He barred, and this time Cypress Snow stiffened. Fickle Snow began, but she was cut. He was cut off by current ranting. I will not have this party we worked so hard to build become a side attraction of Autumn Blaze's all carry freak show. Arden Bloom cleared his throat. Uh, Fickle, uh, sit down, he barked, and Fickle trailed off. Arden sighed, we tallied the vote while you were screaming. The committee would rather work with the Blaze and try to seize power. Fickle all but growled, as chair of the National Association of Kieran Patriots that vetoed the committee's decision. Separate no side deeply, we thought you might. Yeah. Do these come back? We'll do that anyways, but still. Uh, with Fickle Current still fuming at the head of the conference table, Cypress Snow stood up next order of business under Section 10 of the Party Charter. I move to dismiss Chair Karen Fickle Current by two thirds majority of the Executive Committee. Seconded. And over an incomprehensible outburst from the red faced Fickle Current, Arden Bloom calmly raised his hoof. Uh, all in favor, the entire Executive Committee raised their hooves, and before Fickle's eyes, the coup was completed, and the Chair Karen ship had, had been stripped up was awarded jointly to Ardent and Cypress as a matter of course. As a mere nod from Ardent, NAKP security officers grabbed Fickle from behind. As they struggled, Sarpus walked over to him and said, I would have been I would have seen a Kiri under our leadership too, you know, but would have probably made us a whole lot richer. But we missed that ship. Face it, Fickle. Radical scare away investors. And after that little outburst of yours, well, he turned to the security Kiri. Please escort Mr. Curran to his office and help him remove his personal effects. He no longer is entitled to attend closed meetings of the executive committee. Uh, Fickle Curran was dragging, kicking, and cursing from the party he built. As uh, Cypress and Arnett calmly sighed on Autumn Blaze's new constitution behind him. Money doesn't care about your feelings. Oh boy. Uh, before we read that, let's go here. What do we got? The resources. Oh. We can't use anybody. Oh, we don't fit a pile. There are times in life when you think that you can only go upwards, rising the ranks, earning promotions, watching investments blossom, that sort of thing. But no Karen is ever safe from failing, no matter how mighty they may seem. Even the surest investments can go suddenly bankrupt. And those ever rising numbers on the ticker tape can suddenly go from positive to negative without warning. As a calamity being blindsided by watching a line go up for so long that you miss a chance to sell high before the crash hits, and by the time you finally realize that dip isn't a dip at all, but a yawning chasm, you've already lost it all. The NAKP was my investment. I cultivated it, shaped it into a powerful party. Soliciting donations of support from the wealthiest Kieran of the diaspora in the hopes of building into the guiding force to shape the future of the realm. <clears throat> uh, all idea was for the three and a half year plan to stumble and fall. Uh, it seemed like a sure thing. Um, after all, who could ever expect such dreams of grandeur to bear fruit? But when the Autumn Blaze's vision for the future not only took root but blossomed and fruited, I missed my opportunity to course correct. She'd done the impossible and united Kira behind her, now she would charge the path forward out the NAKP as I promised of the Kira I collected donations from. And there's a rule of speculation as true as in any gambling den. Never play with some Kira else's money. When the NAKP's investors realized they were not going to get what I promised them after I took all their money, well, the outcome was, well, pretty much inevitable. Uh, am I angered by it? Yes. 
I'd be foolish to lie to my own personal re recollections. I worked incredibly hard to grow the NAKP and then it was stripped away from me because of our failings. It's a fortunate side of business after all. When business is booming, the CEO basks in the praise and rakes in the riches. When it's failing, however, the board will point their hooves at him and chase him out to prove the, to the rest of the shareholders the changes are being made. I ran the NAKP like a business and so it treated me like a business would. My time is over and those looking to capitalize on it active. The cunning and opportunistic will always find a way to get what they want. I just didn't expect Kira and I called friends to be the ones to pull the trigger, of course. Even though their betrayal hurts, I cannot fall out for Snow and Art and Bloom for acting to have me removed. Businesses is a cutthroat game, and they have their own necks to look out for, and they too may find that the market has changed too much to remain competitive. Though, I'll likely try to follow behind Autumn and Vermilion, remaining relevant and trading water while they seek out new opportunities to expand in that endeavor, I wish them luck. They'll certainly need it. Cyprus is old, and Arden is bold. I don't think they have the instincts to survive in the direction Autumn is pushing the realm in. Uh, in the meantime, a brief respite from the Republic Eye would do me some good. Though I won't mind be mine to lead, I'll keep a, my seat at the table, the NAKP, and maintain my connections. I'll write a book or two where I can shape the story of the NAKP under my guidance with my words before any Kieran else can. I'll sit back and watch how Autumn Blades and the NAKP perform under Separatist and Arden. And if chips go my way, Kieran and the party will look at, at how Zakadin entered the leadership and yearn for the days when I kept it competitive. From there, I won't be too hard to come out on, of the wilderness and make a play to take control of the NAKP or poach the talent like an executive leading to set up a rival firm in the former employee's backyard. Employer's backyard. My housing for the NAKP will only be temporary setback. One day, Kieran will realize that my vision of a disciplined, well oiled, hyper efficient Kieran state under the guiding hoof of the free markets it wasn't the villain it was made out to be. My vision will turn the realm into something worth investing. After all, as any business as Kieran knows, the best investments take time to generate dividends. That is very true. Uh, keep it to the balance. The second ten of the way of fire is this, to make peace with your neighbor. Implied in this and ex explicit in his subsequent teaching is the importance of balance. Our scholar, ancient and modern, declare that to have good health, every piece of your body must be in equilibrium. Also, if you want to read about the wing luck world, then please go ahead too. I think you have four. <clears throat> Research from foreign and native sources pr further prove that our bodies endlessly regulate and control the body and are themselves endlessly regulated and controlled by each other. That's more or less the same with the cure, only that the body is infinitely more complex in the past. A simple choice of following Concord and out. The wills of modernization disturb and muddle that choice from many, while the sounds took away the possibility to choose anything but following Concord. In this new century, we may have survived, but we are by no means healthy. In truth, a hundred years of theories and testing from the rest of Concord's creation have brought into light many parts of society and ourselves that we have not been aware of. Thus, we are now aware of many needs, many wants, to the point the idea of faithfulness to Concord can be interpreted upon equ equally many lights. Uh, though my initial answer has been to rein ourselves in and to pass every physical and moral innovation through the sitting tendency, Autumn and her harmonists have told me of a danger to have enacting too many laws and decrees of setting a legion of boundaries and caveats that boggle the mind. It caught me on the spot. Do we truly need a forever increasing amount of rules just to govern ourselves? Should the cure not be trusted with his or her own judgment, as long as it's been a season with wisdom? Is In this can finally be found the signs of maturity, and made evident and manifest through the matriarch's permission of Autumn's recent decrees. Conquer has done what I could, thought could never happen. She deemed us to be a uh, fully grown-up spirit, ready to go our own myriad of ways, to be fair. There are many contradictions, and converging paths that will spark conflict, but it's here that the way finds a refreshed purpose, to help every cure make peace with each other. The way of the fire as it was, under the serene tendency, I kept the balance before, and so we shall now do the same, though not as rulers, but as sages and judges. We shall stand as motherly figures, not to force our will upon them, for that is the abuse of tyrannical level, but to guide them upon the path conquered has laid out for us, uh, being able to understand all points of view, yet also being able to combine them to a greater truth. Just as a body shall be healthy when all is balanced, Kira shall be. Concord's children from the iridescent dawn's time may not have been familiar with the term during their lives, but an off hoof comment from Autumn's might have been true after all. They were always, uh, that we always were harmonic, and that with the Poe Fire's new rule, I and my fellow uh, priestesses and mystics are simply furthering the Kyrian creation. Um, actually, let's take a look see. So, right now, we do have the institutional stability, right? So, we're losing quite a few things. Ooh, weekly stability gain. Not good. So, um, number of prevent provincial diets of the ruling party. Interesting. No parts without party representation. So, negative 10%. So, we're going to do this one like we read earlier. And, do we actually do anything here? No? Okay. Not good. There's not very much here. Apricot. These might get replaced and stuff, but whatever. Let's 
Cinnabar. Just max out these areas. Sorghum. Population's pretty good. We could use more construction speed down here though. Pico uh Fragrance. Sure, why not? Verdant. Oh, look at all that we have built here. Teak. There you go. So, now how's it looking? Hey, look at that. Political power gain, weekly stability gain, max factories in the state, just follow local signs on Kyria. Just division organization, surrender limit. It's looking fantastic. Try color, huh? Mm -hmm. A multi denominational confessional state. To overcome the uh, schism in the way of fire between the path of the rising fire and the circle of serene tendency, the government will remove all restrictions on dissident sects, such as the rising fire. Are we all still our brothers and sisters under Concord, regardless of the details? Kieran Holding Corpin. Nor the business interests are increasingly conglomerating into an immense Corpin, known as simply known as Kieran. Its extensive holdings across dozens of industries make it a uh, useful private partner for the realm's government. Native, native naval designs? It's a little secret that Kyria's navy is severely outdated, having been mothballed for over a century uh, of the silence. We need to focus on importing and developing more ship, new ship blueprints as soon as possible, and adapt them to the needs of the realm. Modern junks of war. The Fragrance Enterprise has always been the main supplier of the ships for the matriarchate. Should we subsidize it, we can use it to quickly and efficiently create a brand new fleet of modern ju junks of war. Soldiers of the land, we cannot expect Kyria to forever be safe from the other powers of the world sooner or later. Whether well, to defend ourselves, we must ensure that it's as difficult to, as possible for our enemies, but teaching our soldiers guerrilla tactics and using homeland to our advantage. Yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna take a pause on all this stuff over here. And develop like cannons and guns and whatnot. So because those are kind of important. Army motorization, trucks are useful tool for the transportation of troops and supplies, unfortunately. Due to the still lingering effects of the silence, we do not have a lot of experience with the use for military purposes. Thankfully, generals believe that these shortcomings should be easy to make up if we give it enough time. Territorial volunteers. During war times, it's very likely that even the non conscripted Kirin will want to support a war effort and take up arms in defense of the Kirin. It'd be a good idea to allow them to channel us further and form the divisions of territorial volunteers and should the need arise. Patriarch renewal. No longer beholden to fickle current's peculiar vision for Kirin. The NIKP must modernize and diversify to survive, and that means campaigning and competing outside of its traditional strongholds and appealing to a broader base across the realm. By Kyria, by Kirin. The business interests of Northern Kyria are never meant to be outdone. Under the watchful eye and of some alleged of the guiding hoof of, the Realm Development Planning Commission, a juggernaut of northern industrial miners emerged with a name befitting its aspirations. The Kyria Integrated Resource Industrial Network Holding Group, or simply Kirin, began life as a conglomerate of the CIC Trading House's industrial interests. <clears throat> just as a few short months ago. And while the money seems to trace back exclusively to Sisi, that every, every NIKP business Kieran and politician is proudly promoting the role of cutting through red tape so that Kieran could expand. No official documentation is to surface, but Arden Bloom and Sepper Snow are alleged to hold a majority of Kieran's shares between them. Kieran has described his business model as opportunistic acquisition of troubled assets in a long-term growth strategy. Kieran's attractors are described as nothing less than a predatory hyperhegemon, the kind of monopolistic entity that has come to define the aspirations of a modern Kira Cur Uh Increasingly, buying up everything from mines to textile plants to shipyards, Kieran's seemingly bottomless coffers have allowed us to secure almost total dominance of the economy of greater providence. Whether buying a new set of saddlebags or negotiating contracts for modern uh, fighter aircraft, a uh, Kieran north of Vermilion is probably doing their business almost exclusively to the company sold by Kieran. Sassy Trading House took the company public at an extremely ritzy conference in Gala held in Sassy over the past few days. NAKP grandees, government officials, prominent business mayors, and every stockbroker worth their salt in Kyria can be found in attendance. Sipping complimentary of Kieran branded mall from the holdings group's uh, recent expansion into the brewing industry, if it's true that the NAKP's leaders own large amounts of Kieran stock, they certainly became vastly richer over the weekend. There's no music like the jingling of tails in pockets. Changing tap. The NAKP has something of a bad reputation with, from Frickle Kern's confrontational chair Kieran ship. And our armed paramilitaries don't exactly give up a friendly image. If we want a future in harmonic Kyria, we need to reassess our priorities. They're probably pretty too. Pretty pretty good to do. But the wing the wind at our backs is next. What we're gonna read. <coughs> As you see, we've done a couple more focuses over here and here and whatnot. So water injected aircraft engines, huh? Kyrian artifice is not merely our catching up with the world after the long pause of the silence of the questions. 
Mitch Dr. Rainshine said, standing on a dock set of fragrance, but also a chance to demonstrate the unique potential of Kira's people and their magic. Behind her was a ship unlike any scene. Steel hold. An armor with powerful turrets and torpedo tubes and sails, painted in rich reds and midnight blacks. The vessel's three sails floated in the gentle breeze of the harbor, clearing an enormous profile that was some critics were already lambasting. The mere harbor breezes were not aware of the ship drew its power or its cunning. The atmospheric displacement propulsion engine is just one of the many examples of what we Kirin could do when we set our talents to progress. Powered by this new technology, the Vermilion and Kirin Navy will have to sh uh, ship. They can sail faster and further than any of its size, ensuring that we can secure the waters from Zebrica, from pirates and hostile powers alike. Ranger and smiles like a naval cadet stepped up to the lectern and she was speaking on and offered a bottle of fine rice wine, which she graciously accepted. As if for my honor, as Matriarch to hearken in a new era of cure in progress by christening the first ship of her class of the Radiance's ship, uh, Tamaris Gale. Levitated by the Matriarch's magic, the bottle of wine duly shattered in the crown cheer. Another marvel of science and magic, but how does it work? And then after that, Northern Mariculture. The Northern Kirin have a long and stored maritime tradition, and their skeletal small ship buildings are unrivaled. Encouraging their art and adopting their design will serve the Rome's navy well. For the application of fundamental principles. Uh, we're gonna go this one next. On the evening following Rain Shine's christening of the, of the Tamaris Gale, two Kirin made famous by the work on the ship were invited to a radio interview broadcast across the realm. Those affably introduced them as Sage Snoot, the realm's premier scholar of geomancy and numerology, and Dr. Lucent Shine, an equestrian trained engineer of some renown. So began the host, my understanding is that the newest and most innovative ship in the world is essentially the result of you two accidentally bumping into each other for coffee. Sage chuckled. Well, I guess that's one way to put it, yes. We thought of the idea at a cafe, but really, it's a product of things we've been working on together for a while. Lucent Shine's poke up next. I mean, it's all very simple, isn't it? Wind is just air rushing to the area of lower pressure. Build a magical engine to create an area of low pressure yourself, and that... Put that engine on a sailing ship and you can haul yourself around on your own breed. Sage's chuckle was more nervous this time. Well, yes, actually designing that engine proved quite a trick. And we have our friends at Fragrance Enterprise to thank for our patience, their patience and financial support. But yes, essentially, the ship can generate its own wind using a magical engine mounted inside the bow. Those gave it an appreciative hum. Hmm. Well, I appreciate that you, don't, you two don't want to boast, but really this is being called one of the most impressive magi-technical breakthroughs of a century anywhere in the world. Thousands of Kieran have worked hard to make this idea a reality. It seems like it was a pretty good idea to me. And a good reminder for all those listening at home that Kiri is only getting started on a new century of accomplishments. What else can Kirin unity and progress create? So we'll do this one too. Agitate for Blossom. Gains Corn Cherry Blossom. Well, protects Zakiria. Prior to the silence, Kiri was on an Imperial Suzerainty, or Suzerain, over his Ky uh, Zakirian vassals. In the intervening century, as Kiri languished under the silence, the Kirin of Zakira, Zakiria took their destiny into their own hooves and forged a future for themselves in independent of Vermilion. In our dealings with our Zykirian neighbors today, we must respect and protect their self-determination and righthood. Well, it's a little late for that. Agitate for Blossom. Blossom was once a bastion of her influence over the Z Zykirian uh, city-states and has more in common with the realm than its southern neighbors. Well, perhaps the issue of Blossom's status was send kin and encourage them to accept, respect the new region's self-determination. Wireling Detachments. Barbed wire can be an incredibly useful defense tool, but it needs to be constantly repaired, rebuilt, and improved for that reason. We need to train specialized wireling detachments that support our regular soldiers. That would be hard, dangerous, and a thankless job, but with enough motivation and probably a bonus of their wage, we should find enough volunteers, of course. Amending the party share. <coughs> or charter. We're in a position where we're expected to play by the rules of the system we agreed to three and a half years ago. Separate personnel look to the other board members. The discussions around the NAKP's party charter have been ongoing for a good while, and seemingly, as always the case, he found himself at odds with Arden Bloom. I know that some of us find the Constitution stifling, but its principles are sound and offer stability. Going ahead, there's a little sense of maintaining our military assets. They're draining in our finances, and we have plenty of market opportunities without resorting to aggressive expansion. Disbanding them, disavowing aggressive expansionism, and focusing on soft power efforts is completely in line with the current mode of the government and will net us goodwill of plenty. While I'm in agreement that we should bring our charter uh, in line with the Constitution, it still not, will never be and cannot be controversial to protect one's property, Dr. Arden Blue interjected. Hamstringing our ability to protect our assets will make sure... A show of enthusiastic compliance is a mistake. I'm in favor of seizing proactive expansionism. That much we can trade away, but our mandate is key in economic interest. If we hope to fulfill that, we can ensure that we can protect our interests. There's nothing about recent global events that indicates a corporate pacifism with the most efficient choice. Oh god. There's no discussion of pacifism here. We're talking about aggression, not security. As situations proven untenable enough that proactive military forces are needed, then we should be divesting net deploying. This is not extreme, this is a standard operating procedure for companies across the world. Furthermore, the assets we free up will be available for more of the peaceful ventures. We wish to invest in the future or we'll cling to an old money pit. The looks from the other board members turned more and more open to the ideas and separate snow smiled. Our highest goal is cure in peace and prosperity. Cool. 
So that's the adventure. Oh, I forgot about all this. Oh god. Riches and plenty wait us in the jungles of Taliari. If only we had the bones of secret fortunes there. With the NAKP's military assets dissolved, the parties for the funding began a completely new enterprise with the South Sea Venture Company. India. Shake up the gray. Oh, I've never seen that so far. Kingdom of India, look at that. Interesting. So opening more roads and whatnot. If we need a port, we can build like a giant one here. Two giant ones, I guess. <clears throat> well, I guess we'll actually take the blossom next. That's pretty easy to do. The New Towns Express. Railways are what kind of that what bind the multitudinous threads of modern civilization together. To commemorate the beginning of the radiant prosperity, the New Times Express Rail Network could be constructed to bring the key and the realm more close to each other than ever before. Traditional swordsmanship. Though melee weaponry in most nations was mostly replaced with rifles decades ago, even Kyria starts to embrace this change. Our vanguards will be one of the most best swords made in the entire world. Instead of abandoning this tradition, we should teach these vanguards how to incorporate their weapons in the hit, run, hit and gallop tactics. Realm Conscription Ordinance. If Kyria is attacked or attacked, we need have enough mayor power to defend it properly. We'll introduce new laws that allow us to draft a significant chunk of our population to the army. However, forcing the Kyria to constantly serve is not, only going to, is not only the harmonious way, but it would also be demoralizing to our citizens. Therefore, our laws can only be enacted during wartime. Weapons Procurement. Banal as it may sound, the Kyrian army needs weapons to fight. One can say a lot of things about the realm during the silence, but its excelling in military production is most certainly not one of them. We'll start by preparing a plan to efficiently develop our military industry and build several weapon factories in key areas. The guy up north is starting to worry me just a tiny bit. He's getting bigger, stronger, and hopefully we're ready for him. Probably not. Of course, we need more steel too, but still. Hmm. New Towns Express, huh? Oh, we'll get this one next after this one, yeah. New Towns Express is next. I was kind of hoping this is going to be the last episode, but I guess not. Then that's fine. Homegrown uh, Kira Corpin. Kowloon Nationals rocketed a dominant position in the Kyrian economy and uniquely among the realm's largest, largest corporations. It has no major foreign entanglements. This might make it a useful vehicle for the state sensitive military industrial development. Look at all the stuff we can build. Tons of stuff. If that's the case. Um, planes are good. Naval stuff is important too, though. Uh, towed artillery. Oh, hello. Oh, God. We're using artillery from centuries ago. Yeah, that'll be good to do. Advance, advance. It's nice, but we still need some <laughs> better plane engines. Interception group. Well, we'll see what happens. Yeah, they're doing pretty well over here. Stalin guys are nice and thick, though. <clears throat> Happy July 1st. <coughs> Last stop, no fragrance. Now, every Kieran, please settle down, settle down. Don't crowd the platforms. There's no spot for any Kieran, not Kieran tickets already. I'm afraid not even a bucket of tails could buy you into these. Any one of these fine locomotives we're about to witness. But fear not all, there will be da daily non-stop services from right here in Sorghum Central Station to the furthest reaches of our fair land, in uh, utmost comfort. You might even have better luck, inquiring at our ticketing encounter for about tomorrow's train. So venture on the mighty gallopers n run north to Fragrance in the morning, or perhaps follow the mellow south of Verdant with Goldenrod. 
However, the glow up to our services, the chrysanthemum was the most to be the most luxurious of all. But don't go now, stay right here. Here they come, the meeting of the south, north, and west, right here in Sorghum. Perhaps the announcer of this event was getting a bit ahead of herself compared to the crowd, but the New Times line was paying her to get the crowd excited. Not that they needed much more reason. Right on time, as the announcer finished speaking, the three locomotives burst into the train station to a chorus of odd and excited gasps. There are no cankerous old imported boilers like those Kieran had seen before, and as much unison as could be expected. Three sleek and modern locomotives, still bearing their factory shine, pulled up to the platforms and began discharging crowds of porters, guards, and passengers. Well, just fragrance business here. A temple's worth of chrysanthemums, mystics, and a huge contingent of Verdun's notables, all mingling on the platform at once, a furthest flung cities of Kira brought together in its heart. Two extra tails will get you into the parlor car. The Rome Lands Commission. The rapid industrialization of the realm requires massive quantities of natural resources as well as land in which to construct new factories and industrial complexes, alongside all the attendant infrastructure to sustain the new economy. The Rome Lands Commission will be given statutory powers to find and acquire land for development and resource extraction. Nice. You probably used torpedo mountings too. Good, good, good. Oh, look at that. Nice. Well, at least we don't have pre industrial artillery anymore. That's good, at least. Measure of success. Flash firework grinned into the cameras and recorded light flared to life, and the film reel began to roll. Welcome back to another Flash Facts interview. Should you welcome the audience that will soon see your newsreel in a few days? I'm your host, Firework Flash. I'm here today with Midnight Moon, CEO of Calvin National, and she had with a wink and a stage whisper. My old classmate at Maine Hatton Polytechnic. Why don't you tell us about, about the can and the work you've been up to, Moon? I'll be happy to, Midnight Moon said, smoothing out invisible wrinkles in her dress skirt and smiling with the charm of charisma into the camera. Calhoun National has always been a valued individualism, hard work in the value of the free market, but perhaps most importantly, we are firm believers in Kieran patriotism. Unlike the other powerhouses of the economy, KN is a true Kieran co corporation, with any roots or ties of foreign investors or capital. The revival and rise of Kieran has provided wonderful opportunities to succeed in the economic boom that followed. KN took advantage of the tremendous demand for natural resources and raw materials through the realm's flourishing construction and manufacturing market. A true investment in the realm, you'll have to see it, Flash said, and then her tone shifted from support to questioning. I do have to ask, of course, about the mass redundancy accusations and the headlines about your lobbyists working hard to prevent the implementation of ongoing minimum wage legislation in the Morris Secretariat. How can Kayan claim to be a champion of the Kieran interests when the company fights so hard to deny rights to its workers and punishes those who step out of line? Moon, last sharp, a sharp clear. And though it faded as she gave her answer, great hard work separate the wheat from the chaff, and Kayan's interests are the interests of the realm. Our very close work with the military means that success for Kayan is safety for the realm. We're a meritocracy, not a charity. Then how can you justify Kayan receiving subsidies from the government? Flash asked, but rather than respond, Moon instead smiled at the camera and stood up to leave. Thank you for the interview, Flash, but I must really be going. You only want to give him the answers that you want to give him. Nothing more, nothing less. You never know. I'm sure we're suffering here for, from supply stuff, but it'll be done soon enough. And just in case, this one and uh, this one. There we go. Nice. What we got here? The realm's resources. The vast realm contains an abundant untapped natural resources left neglected because of the silence, and Calhoun National has proven itself useful. With new grants of authority, we could use it to overhaul our industry towards resource production in order to ensure a Kirian autarky. Ah. Realm Defense Network. Kyria's large consists of different types of regions. Some of them are almost completely flat, others are mountainous, some are more urban, and others are rural. During a defensive war, we cannot treat them the same as Seb. We must prepare separate defensive plans for each of them, capitalizing on their unique characteristics. Which is probably a good idea to do. Make a little room. Autumn Blaze tried to avoid meetings of the Rome Development Planning Commission, most because it tended to involve a lot of minutia. We went over her hat, but today she'd been pulled into a meeting with Chair Kieran Arden Bloom. <clears throat> 
Let me get this straight out, I'm still looking confused. The very first five year development plan is about to go off the rails because you can't find enough land. But curious you, just use some land we're not using. Hard and Slatter shook his head. It ain't that easy, Premier. We need quite a lot of land. It has to be in the right places, you know. To build transportation networks, factories, worker residences, mines. Uh, you get the picture. Some of the other commissioners are joking about invading the neighbors just so we'll have room for the warehouse. This plan's gonna need. <clears throat> Autumn Gasp. That's a horrible thing to joke about. Uh, Arden shrugged and turned it back to his binder full of reports. Maybe it is, but if we're not doing that, then the commission needs you to convince the secretariat to find or let us clean house if they're here within our own borders. Curious huge, like you said, but most of it's held in com communal title. Or it's privately owned, but vacant and abandoned. Or it's legally property of the dynasty or some temple that, even if it hasn't been touched in 500 years. Or it's nearly abandoned urban district that never recovered from the silence. You get the idea. Give us permission to repossess land like that and we'll have a humming cure in economy in no time. Autumn paused and looked down, groaning. That also sounds pretty horrible, you know. You make it sound easy, but lots of care to live on those lands. Again, Arden shrugged. You asked me to build you an industrial base. I'm quoting you the price tag. Simple as. The secretary isn't going to build a, put a few squatters ahead of the future of Kira, is it? Come increase state building slots. At this point, we can do that too. Why not? Oh, to clear trail from modernization? I think I this one earlier. But anyways, it's been an arduous task taking delicately with breakneck speeds, but against all odds, the Kira have stepped out of the silence with their heads held high. Having struck the, struck the perfect balance between the quest of techno-industrialization and the dreams of every cure from all upbringings, we shall return to the world stage's ties, accepting the ways of modernity on our terms. Nice. Oh, it's this over here. Look at that. Land clearance in Vermilion Basin. Gets a bit farewell to the commons. Goodbye, commons. Is there anything else like that here? Probably doesn't look like it. Cool. <clears throat> oh, a world class institution. Oh, Kira Collegium's proved its worth as a key engine of Kira's scientific and technological modernization. Where funding support must be devoted to the Collegium to make it not merely national or regional, but a uh, global academic institution uh, worthy of the realm and the Kirian people. Yeah, why not? There we go. We'll do all this up a little later. Nice. Are we really sure why not? What else we got here now? Anything else? Not seeing too much else. Okay, interesting. Um, so we got all this one we're going to do. We did this one, Army Tanker School. Tanks are another recent development in warfare that didn't manage to find its way to Kyria due to the silence. We lack not only the tanks themselves, but also capable personnel able to operate them efficiently. We can expect our enemies will be far behind us, so something needs to be changed. Needs to change in this regard. Yeah, very true. Vanguard Elite. The vanguards were and still are the fastest, deadliest, and most well-trained soldiers in our army. We make sure there are centuries of experience and tradition in order to provide a significant support for our regular army. We'll train them to be deadly units adapting to modernity, still re yet representing Kyrian traditions. Uh, partisan anvil. <coughs> An enemy invasion may penetrate deep into the realm before a counteroffensive can be marshaled. Until then, our Savion forces will delay the invaders as much as possible. Once the tide of battle turns, the guerrillas will pivot to preventing the invaders' retreat and trapping them so they may be smashed on the partisan anvil by the hammer of our counterattacking armies. Nice. Uh, Kyrian Universal Exposition at 10.15. And an end to languishing in silence uh, the start of what I personally hope is a very loud and exciting century for Kyria. Autumn Blades and all but stumbling over herself in excitement. Uh, for some time now, she stood with an enormous pair of ceremonial scissors anxiously close to snipping uh, a ceremonial red ribbon in front of her. Uh, behind her. 
Uh, the colorful and fantastic pavilions of Kirin and National Universal Expedition awaited a crowd of eager festival goers, but they could not be let in until Autumn opened the exposition and she continued to find new things to bring up in her joy. Just as it seemed, she was finally trailed off and do the honors. I mean, we've really come a long way, haven't we? When you get all in there and you're going to see the finest that Kiri has to offer, there's new foods, wacky inventions, oddities, marvels, and you name it. I had a ton of fun helping the Collegium set up this huge exhibit on all the new research partnerships, and should we especially visit the Equestrian Pavilion? Applejack is going to be there in... At that moment, Applejack had been awkwardly languishing on the stage next to Autumn. His whole time cleared her throat. Sheepishly, she leaned over and whispered, I think the folk gets the idea, Premier. Maybe you could. So Autumn never said, go to the audience, nip the ribbon. To get a better, brighter curio. Holy crap. A fifth research slot. Wow. We are what we call special. God dang, we're really far behind in everything, aren't we? Huh. Pacification, please. In the event of war, we might be forced to occupy portions of the enemy's territory to achieve victory. In that case, we'd have to develop methods of handling the local population. We cannot be too harsh to them and make them see us as their enemies, but we must also be strict enough to ensure they would not disturb our further military operations. True. I won't get to that. I'll, I'll do that between this episode and the next. Very nice. Oh, I'll go that one next one now. And then Providence Strangers. Oh, I got Toad Anti Air. We're researching a whole lot of stuff very quickly. It's pretty nice. Marshall Cover Sky passes away, unfortunately. Eight Golden Mayoralities. The eight cities, great cities of Kiri are powerhouses of industry, commerce, and political influence, and each having unique needs that are difficult uh, to address at the national level. Expansive autonomy under the new mayoralty system will allow them to manage their local affairs and further uphold the principles of consociationalism. State actions. Huh. Muzzle breaks are nice. At least these things are happy decent now. Good medium batteries. Sure. Do we still get the event down here too? Farewell to the commons? Farewell to the commons. How many more days we got for that? Quite a few days. Try this in a bullet pair of water stuff. Air defense is good. Fake ship attack is good. Pretty good. Another general entry for Autumn Blaze. Fantastic. And then the Vanguard Elite. Yeah, we read that one. On who supply lines. The vastness of Kira, combined with this dense forest and steep mountains, this can make properly of supplying troops a logistical nightmare. However, we can mobilize small groups of on whose porters that would be in charge of delivering supplies for troops in difficult areas. They wouldn't be as effective as a truck or train, but they can reach places where they would often fail us. How do you keep a country that's modernizing and urbanizing beyond any creature's wildest imaginations from spiraling out of control from too much of a good thing? Well, if some creature had thought of a solution before, I would have loved to have known about it, but for now, we have to do the best we can with the tools and ideas we have at our disposal, right now. The realm is dealing with an urbanization that's never been before seen, as Kieran moved back into the cities and off the subsistence farms they've been relegated to in the silence, and the needs of the cities are very different from the towns and villages, and until now made up the majority of the population centers of the realm. Administering a city is a complex task that requires different powers, um, uh, skill sets, and an entirely different context from the provincial diets that used to govern large swaths of sparsely populated countryside and dozens of small towns. So, have we decided to go about addressing this problem? Another uh, golden moralities. It's a fancy name, I know, and I spent a lot of time thinking about what I wanted to call it. You can hold your applause, dear diary, but the beauty is in the simplicity. In short, the eight great cities of the realm, Vermilion Fragrance, Rhapsody Radiance, Verdant Chrysanthemum, Sorghum in my hometown of Mascot, will be granted their own mayoralities to administer their affairs independent of the provincial diets that cover their, cover their territory. So the cities will be governed by a mayor and a 10 care mayoral cabinet elected from the city representatives of the provincial diet to enact and execute municipal legislation. 
The care of the seeds will be able to elect the representat representatives, allowing them to make their voices heard and solve the problems they need solving in a, only, a way only they can. Democracy in action. Even as we worked on drafting the eight golden mayoralities decree, Fern Flair pointed out that it will also help the cities address any bubbling discontent and unrest. The same kind of issues that led to the noctisolent charm enacting the silence in the first place last century. By letting the cities handle their own affairs, it allows them to divert their discontent into electoral politics, letting Kieran make their voices heard in the ballot box instead of, you know, going to a mindless, narrow, berserker rage and burning down a couple buildings to express their anger instead. Letting the cities solve the problems as their electorate sees fit will help foster harmony across the realm by providing different solutions to different challenges and allowing the others to adopt something that works somewhere else, rather than a mandate for Vermillion is proposing a one-size-fits-all solution that works for some cities and definitely doesn't work for others. Given how badly things in the realm tend to go when one group's opinions tries to make the others conform to it, it's a good idea to keep the peace. With all the chaos that's happened over the last few years, I think we've all come to realize that Kira is a pressure cooker. Although any release vows for Kira to express their discontent is in an acceptable way, such as a ballot box, they tend to th th think taking up arms and overthrowing the local government is the only way to get what they want. I don't think I'd explain why governing a realm that thinks overthrowing the government can get what they want is a very difficult task. Even as we work towards enacting the decree, Cinder Glow warned me that there's a chance that these sort of local electoral politics could result in different cities, uh, entrenching divisions from the rest of the realm, and championing those differences in some sort of idea that they're better than the rest. It's kind of a scary thing if you look at what that extreme could look like. Instead of the eight great cities working together to solve the realm's problems, you could end up with eight different cities that each resent each other for being different. It's like being each of a section of an orchestra playing its own melody, unable to come together in true harmony. That's why we need a conductor, so to say. A national identity of Kirin, the recognition that the Kirian people are not subjects of Vermilion or even their own mayoralities, but the citizens of the realm. Thankfully, there are three such conductors that can work together to keep the orchestra together and the people happy. The Matrix Superior, the Way of Fire, and now the Kirian Constitution. The rising third pillar on which the realm stands, so long as all three of these parts conduct the orchestra together, and the Kirian people grow to respect and defend the Constitution, then harmony in the realm will truly flourish like never before. Yeah, that's cool. There you go. And there we go, too. Vanguard Elite and the uh, Artillery Branch, perhaps? Next episode is probably the last one for their, this campaign, but we'll never know. <coughs> the artillery is one of the most important parts of modern warfare, and the right circumstances being able to easily shred through enemy soldiers and fortifications. While the destruction of the brains is devastating, war does not always allow for such moral qualms, investing in the research. Regarding this weaponry, it's necessary to ensure Kyria's welcome of military victories should the need arise, but if you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow where we will probably end this campaign. Well, look at that. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day.